So why are we out here today? Well, I wanted to show you something that's very important to how we approach hitting a drum. And one of the best ways I could figure to show you would be to actually show you how it works. So, sticks up, shut up, let's do it. So I'm out here talking about fundamental stroke and that's why I brought you out here today. You have to understand that there's a certain amount of energy that has to be put into the stick so that you can get enough energy back so that you can continue playing music. Music isn't about necessarily playing one note at a time and especially drumming, we play multiple notes in a row. So the whole idea is that we put in energy to the drum so that we get enough energy to bring it back and also continue the flow of energy. So the best analogy I can come up with is a basketball. When we bounce a basketball, there's all kinds of energy floating around and we have to learn how to guide that energy. We have to learn how to put enough energy so that the ball comes back, but we also be, have to be able to guide it and tell it where to go and how fast to go and all that stuff. So that's why we're here on the basketball court. So with a basketball, we have to push the thing down. If we just drop it, it's not gonna do enough. We have to actually push it down to get the energy back. And we also can't with a basketball, and it doesn't make sense to do this, we can't pull it down, right? Like pulling it down, like it doesn't make sense. It's gravity's taking it down anyway, um, but gravity's not enough, but we wouldn't pull it down. And you don't see anybody playing basketball pulling the ball down towards the ground when they dribble. They're pushing it down to the ground with their hand. And that's the same with a drumstick. You know, we're not gonna pull the stick down with our fingers, pull it towards the drum. And I'll show you this when I get back inside. We're not gonna pull it down towards the drum head with our fingers. We're gonna push it down with our palm, just like we do with a basketball. So with that, let's go inside and I'll show you what I'm talking about with the patent sticks. The technique of striking a drum is something that happens over time. When I'm teaching someone how to strike a drum, I don't have them play one note at a time because it's not centered on one note. It's centered on connecting multiple notes together because that's what we do, we're musicians. If we had a one note show, then yeah, you could teach people one note and that was it. If, this, if the player only needed to play one note ever, then yeah, teach them how to hit that drum and make it sound as good as possible and it, and it doesn't matter beyond that. But that's not what we do. We play lots of notes, lots of notes, over and over again, connected, not connected, up strokes, down strokes. We play all kinds of things and usually we play lots of notes. So instead of having my brand new students come in and we focus on how to strike the drum one time at a time, I focus on getting from one note to the next note. First things first, let's talk about grip. I've got a video about it right up there and it goes a little more in depth, but the gist of it is we want contact without pressure, even fingers, right? All the way across the stick, no squeezing back here, no squeezing up here, no squeezing in the middle, even pressure throughout. We don't want a little gap back here or anything like that. We don't want our fingers to be moving too, too much. Um, and that's for a very specific reason, which I can get to in a different video. That's a whole other, that's a whole other thing that we're gonna talk about. I mean, yes, there's the grip video, but then there's a whole argument about fingers versus no fingers versus blah, 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 blah. Anyway, contact without pressure. We're holding the stick, we're cradling the stick. Just like with the basketball, I'm gonna use my hand to push the stick towards the drum. I'm not gonna use my fingers to pull the stick towards the drum, right? I'm not gonna pull the stick towards the drum using my fingers. I'm going to push the stick with the top of my hand. And when we push the stick to the drum, I get a very nice, even, warm sounding tone. Right? And when I pull the stick to the drum, I get more of a brittle, you know, underwhelming sound, right? It's all stick and there's no me. We want you in the drum. We want that sound of you. We want your sound. We want a human sound. We don't want to take the human out of this music. So this very thin sound with the drum, if I use my fingers to pull it to the drum, right? It's a very thin sound, but if I put my fingers around the stick and I push with my palm instead of pull with my fingers, I get more of a warmer, beefier sound. There's the fingers. There it is with the hand. I don't know if you can tell with this, you know, through this microphone, but try it on your own. 
trust me, and let me know in the comments what you think. What this lets me do is it lets me play all different kinds of notes without having to constantly change what my grip looks like. That's really important when we think about how to approach hitting the drum. If it sounds different and you actually move differently between these two different styles of grip, right? This kind of style and this kind of style, we're moving differently, we're sounding differently, if I'm constantly having to change that to perform different kinds of, of notes and rhythms, then it's gonna translate into an imperfection in my playing and people are gonna notice, right? People who don't play music can still notice when you mess up. And so what you wanna do as a performer is you wanna give them the confidence that you know what you're doing. And so what we do is we keep the grip the same throughout and what this technique allows you to do is play different kinds of notes with the same technique without having to constantly change what your hands look like in order to perform each different variation. So what we have to do is we have to leverage the rebound that we get out of the drum and guide that energy into getting different kinds of groups of notes. So I can play one note at a time. Contact without pressure, I'm just turning my hand back. And you can see in the other camera that my fingers are going with the stick, right? My whole hand is moving. And then if I wanna do two notes at a time, I can still do that without having to drastically change what my hand is doing. And you'll notice that it kind of has a down and up kind of look to it, right? So instead of it being single notes, right? I'm, I'm wristing out both those notes. There's a down up look to the way I move. If I wanted to play threes, it's a little more, right? You get the middle note, which is kind of a tap, and then the last note is your up note, right? See the last note goes up. All without having to change so much what my fingers are doing. Probably the most crucial thing that I see a lot with people who, who try to practice this contact without pressure technique you know, where they're not letting go of the stick, is they will slow down the speed of the stick without even knowing it. And what that means is instead of hitting the drum, this is, this is something I tell my students a lot, instead of actually striking or hitting the drum, they're touching the drum. What ends up happening is they end up slowing the stick speed down without even realizing it and just touching the drum instead of hitting the drum. If I just touch the drum, I'm not gonna get anything out of it. And it's a really cool thing to be able to do. And I, I sometimes have my advanced players do this where they practice different stick speeds, right? Velocities into the head. Generally we say the further away you are from the drum, the louder of the sound. But what's cool is you can use your fingers in your hand, still not squeezing, by the way, you can use your fingers in your hand to slow the stick speed down and touch the drum. And it looks like this. And you can make it look really smooth. But the problem with that is, I'm doing all the work, all of it. I'm doing the down and the up. And I look relaxed and I'm moving and it looks okay, but the sound won't be there. And you're gonna get very tired very quickly because you're doing both sides of the work. The idea is throw it into the drum and let your fingers and your hand go along for the ride. Really practice hitting that drum so that you get all that energy back. When I'm slowing the stick down and I'm using all my wrist, you're gonna hear a very drastic change in the way my, my, my pad here sounds. Check it out. So this is, I'm gonna start by playing into the drum and getting lots of rebound out. Okay, now this is what it sounds like when I'm just touching the drum. I'm controlling the down and the up. Just touching the drum, not actually hitting the drum. Here's touching the drum, and here's hitting the drum. We have to train ourselves to get the same kind of rebound using this contact without pressure, looking like it's very, very wrist and rigid. It, that's what people always say. They always say that it's gonna be rigid when you use your wrist. It doesn't have to be. And what that boils down to is how relaxed your grip actually is. Now, if we've got the fingers wrapped completely around the sticks, then our, uh, 
our ability to move our fingers is 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 inhibited somewhat. I mean, the stick's gonna wobble around in my hand, and that's totally fine because I'm not squeezing it. But the point is, I'm not letting it open a lot. And once I do, you can start to see I get a gap in here. I'm allowed to open my stick or open my hand. So we have to keep our fingers wrapped around the stick, but loose enough so that we're free to move our wrist and it's being it's free to be pushed by the energy that we get back from the drum. So an exercise that I like to teach, uh, have my, st my students use, especially students who have been drumming before and they're using this fulcrum method, I like to have them do eight or so notes fulcrum and then eight or so notes with their fingers wrapped around the stick. And so what we try to do is when we switch, we try to keep the same kind of rebound throughout the exercise. Let's try it. Hopefully you noticed that the, the way the stick moved was very similar, in fact, in the way that it rebounded, right? And the way that it came off the drum, it was very similar. The difference is where it moves from, right? So in the fulcrum method, it's gonna center around this pivot point, but in contact without pressure kind of situation, the way I'm teaching, uh, the way that I've been taught, it, it centers more around the wrist. And so what we have to do is we have to figure out, and that's the point of the exercise, if you try this at home, and I hope that you do, you can find that happy medium of how much do I need to hold on to the stick in order to keep that nice flowy rebound without slowing the stick down once it gets to the drum so that my wrist can move. It's an eye-opening exercise in that you can, you can get that rebound going with this that you're comfortable with, or it's easy to achieve actually if you're using this fulcrum method, very easy to get a good rebound but then to wrap the fingers all the way around and keep that same level of fluidity, fluidity, keep that same level of fluidity, that's the goal. We're trying to keep that same fluid motion with connected notes. In addition to going back and forth between the fulcrum method and, and you using your wrist, you need to practice what it feels like to touch the drum versus actually strike the drum. So you could go back and forth between all three. You could do all fingers, right? fingers and then go into uh let's do actually hitting the drum with our fingers wrapped around so fingers and then hitting the drum and then touching the drum and you'll notice it takes a lot of muscle control to just touch the drum and so that's what a lot of people think of when they think of using their wrist they think that i'm squeezing the stick and i'm touching the drum and i'm getting a very rigid sound or rigid motion, and that's not at all what I'm talking about. So this this exercise is designed going back and forth between the finger, the finger jam, and the wrist. That's designed to help you figure out how to wrap your fingers around the stick, stay relaxed, and still get a nice, beautiful rebound. When we talk about where the where the stroke starts from, what we want is we want our wrists to be level, level across, shoo, straight across. And that's for a very specific reason. So our wrist is kind of in line with the beat of the stick. We don't want to be under the beat of the stick to start off from, right? Which means my drum is too low or something. I want to be nice and level. I don't want to be above the bead when I start playing. I want to be nice and level because the range of motion that we're talking about for this type of drumming, this stroke, is level because it's going to be up on a level with the drum and it's gonna come up from there. And so pretty much everything you play, once you start playing, your wrists will be under the bead of the stick. A lot of fans of the piston method or the stone method will have you starting in an up position. And that makes sense because you're trying to get the energy to come back. And rarely do we start, especially in a drumline scenario, do we start from an up position. That's a weird place to start. So a lot of people will start down here at a resting position and then begin to play. And the mindset that I always put myself in when I was doing the drumline stuff and I'm resting here waiting to play is I kind of think of it as electricity, right? The light was off and then I flip the switch and the light was on and I immediately have energy and it's as if the light was always on to begin with. What that looks like is 
like the stick was already in motion. So you want to move at the rate of speed that you're going to be in, right? So if you're starting slow, I always think about nice and slow, kind of a medium, not too slow. Something you have to feel out. Too slow will make you miss that attack every single time. Too slow. <laughs> and then trying to guess. So the speed, it should be relaxed. It should be natural. Don't overthink it. Just pretend, again, I don't want to say too many words because that can get me into all kinds of different comment section battles and I don't want that. But the, the thing I always think about is as if I was already playing, right? Don't overthink it. The benefit of starting in the up position is you can practice that, that idea of getting enough energy to come back to where you started, right? Just like with the basketball. You can practice the idea of getting enough to come back to where we started from. And once you get good at that, getting enough energy to come back to where you started from, you wanna give it a little bit more. I always tell my students to give me more energy into the drum than you need. Not too much, right? Like not, a, not an excruciating amount where the stick is gonna, it wants to fly back forever. Just give me a little more than you need. And what that translates to is a nice, good, solid tone into your drum. And you'll get plenty of rebound to deal with whatever kind of notes that you see as you're reading your music. So starting from the up position, throw it into the drum, get it back to where you started, and then give yourself just a little bit more, maybe 10% more. And so what happens is what we don't want is we don't want you to stop at the very top between notes. We don't want it to freeze at the top. Because what do I have to do? I have to squeeze to stop and there's a pause. I'm trying to connect my notes. And the best way to connect your notes is to let it get to where the top was, where you started, and then kind of round it out at the top and send it back to the drum. And you can see that it's blurry all the way through and you can see me turn the stick around at the very top. Nice and fluid. What we also don't want is we, want, we don't want to be downstroking. If you're downstroking, what essentially that means is you're stopping the stick as soon as it hits the drum, right at the bottom of the, of the stroke. You're stopping it. And once you stop it, what do you have to do to play the next note? You got to start it again. So you're basically inhibiting the rebound. You're stopping the rebound. You're not letting it rebound. You're playing down into the drum, stopping the note, starting again, and playing the next note. That's a lot of work. That's almost, that's actually more work than just touching the drum in some cases. At least touching the drum, I'm in a fluid motion. <laughs> I'm in a down and up, using my muscle to do the down and an up, fluid motion. But if I'm stopping the stick and downstroking, you can see me stop down here, then that means I'm squeezing and I'm not letting it rebound. And in order to not let it rebound, in that, in that instance, I have to squeeze the note, right? I have to absorb that energy. But then I have to go back to the top, which means I'm using my muscle to get back here. I don't want to use my muscle to get back here. I want the rebound to push me back here. We're starting from the down position. The idea is you don't want to necessarily start from the wrists. Nine times out of 10, I'm not starting a molar stroke pretty much ever. Do I use that whippy motion sometimes? Yes, very little, but I do use it. But it's never really, hardly ever, I can't think of any instances where I would begin playing that way by breaking my wrist and getting that whip motion from the get go. The way I like to think about it is if someone were to come up to me and put their hand underneath the bead of my stick, and push my hand up that way, that's where everything starts from. So essentially it starts from my wrist. My wrist is what makes my motion, my initial motion, my up motion for that very first note. Once I'm going, I'm pushing down. I'm Rebound's pushing me up and I'm pushing the stick down, right? So it's literally like a basketball. The, the ball comes up and I push it back down. It's the same with the stick. So when I'm sitting here and I'm about to play, I think about the bead starting everything and my wrist stays under the bead of the stick 
pretty much the whole time, unless I'm playing like super fast rolls where I kind of have to pump, but that's a whole other video. But for this beginner stroke, this fundamental stroke, try to stay under your stick with your wrist and keep those fingers, remember, keep those fingers contact without pressure. So if I'm starting from zero, if I'm starting from not playing, resting position, think about the stick starting from the bead and I'm already under the stick, under the bead with my wrist, and then play. So remember, we're not in the business of controlling the stick. We're in the business of guiding the stick. We're also not in the business of letting the stick do what it wants. You're the musician, you're the one playing the notes, so naturally, you have to be in control. You have to guide the stick where it needs to go so that you can play the notes that you need to play. So don't let the stick do what it wants because at some point, you're gonna have to intervene, whether that's with your fingers or your wrists or your elbows or your or your forearms or, or any of that stuff. You're gonna have to intervene on some level. So why not stay there the whole time and just guide the stick as it goes through its natural, its natural motion? Last things last. How do we stop when we play? Does anybody ever think about that? I hope that you don't. Because if you overthink it, then you're gonna start doing weird things that you don't need to do. For instance, for all you drumline folks out there, Next time you go to a show, listen to some other drum lines, listen to their eight on a hand. If they sound like this, you hear that last note, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it gets louder. It's because they're doing something different for that last note, which means in their brain, they're going, stop the stick. Whether they're squeezing it, or they're, they're squeezing the stick, or they're, you know, enforcing their wrist to not, you know, be pushed up by the stick anymore. They're doing something, and what that translates to is a difference in sound. Treat all your notes the same, unless it's written, obviously, as an accent. Treat them all the same. That's the whole point of eights, right? Is to practice that hand-to-hand -hand transition. So don't overthink stopping. Just stop. Like I said earlier, I think of starting as turning on the lights. If I turn off the lights, it doesn't do anything extra, it just cuts the power. The light wants to be on, right? Because once it gets power, it comes on. Once you turn the power off, once you break the circuit, it just shuts off because it's no longer getting power. The energy is still there, it's just not connected. Same thing, same with this. The energy's no longer, it's not there, I'm not playing. We turn on the energy, there it is. We turn off the energy, it stops. The light doesn't go, stop! Right? The light doesn't just uh, turn off. It just doesn't, doesn't have any energy anymore. So I, that's how I like to think about it when I stop playing. I don't squeeze. I don't do anything different. I just stop using my muscles. And you can see the sticks hop a little bit and wiggle around in my hands, and that's totally normal. I didn't do anything. All my notes should sound the same. You don't hear this. Right? I'm not actively stopping the stick. I'm passively stopping the stick. I'm just stopping moving. I'm not I'm no longer active. I'm not doing anything. I'm just putting no energy into it. It's as simple as that. All right, that's it for today. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comment section and I'll try to get to them. If you have any ideas for other videos or topics that I should talk about, definitely put that in the comment section below. If you like this video and you found it useful, go ahead and play an eighth note on the like button. If you did not like this video and you think I'm dumb and you think my ideas are dumb, go, and go ahead and play two eighth notes on the dislike button. Don't forget to subscribe. That'll help me a lot. It'll help with the algorithm things. I know there's a lot of information out there uh, in regards to drumming and how to drum and how to play and technique and all that stuff. And I don't see a whole lot of people putting out the same kind of information that I am, at least not on YouTube. And if they are, then I don't, you don't hear about them. So let's click the like, let's subscribe, let's hit the bell icon, let's do all the things so that we can build up a good community of solid drummers who, who know how to play. All right, I'll see you next time.